If you're like me, at some point in your life, you've discovered a conspiracy theory that you believed because you researched it and there was all this information that showed you this is no theory, this is fact. And why isn't the rest of the world woken up to this being true? But you have to remember that when you research a conspiracy theory, a lot of times the information you're finding about that theory has been put online by other people that believe the conspiracy theory is true. It doesn't mean they can't be unbiased but it means that there isn't a dissenting opinion a lot of times. There's no skeptical opinion. There's, there's no debunking going on. Instead, it's a group of people that already believe it's true and put information online that only validates it's true. And sometimes they'll omit information that blatantly debunks the conspiracy theory. So you gotta be careful when you discover a theory and you start researching it because probably you're only seeing one side. But in some cases, these conspiracy theories turn out to be true. Now, in today's story, we don't know if this conspiracy theory is true, but we have pretty difficult to refute video evidence, and we have believers and skeptics alike saying, you know what, this is worth re-examining. I think that there might have been a cover-up here. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right channel because that is all I do and I upload three, four, even five times every week. If that's of interest to you, I would encourage you to go out and get a candy apple kit from your local grocery. <laughs> get it together. If that's of interest to you, then I would encourage you to go to your local supermarket and purchase a candy apple making kit. But instead of using apples, use large red onions and dip one of those bad boys in and offer it to the like button. Also, please subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. John Lang was a former U.S. Marine who lived in Fresno, California. And in 2015, while he was living there, he was at a local store and he noticed in the parking lot that some police were acting suspiciously. He did some digging and he noticed that they were running a scam. The police would scan license plates of parked cars in these parking lots. And if they got a hit, they would wait until that person came back, got in their car and drove away. The police would follow them and then pull them over and act like it was just a routine thing when they knew they were gonna be able to bust them on this particular violation. This was totally unethical and totally illegal. So Lang began posting on his Facebook about this scam and he would tell people that this was profit driven. The Fresno PD, they operated on a quota system. So the more people they could arrest, the more money they made. Lang also began posting comments on the Fresno Bee's webpage. The Fresno Bee was a local newspaper and he would go to their comment section of different articles and he would voice this concern about the Fresno PD and he would tell them that they need to do something about this, you need to investigate the Fresno PD. No one on Facebook was taking Lang seriously and no one from the Fresno Bee was reacting to John's claims that there was the scam happening. Now it's important to note at this time that the Fresno Police Department had a very bad reputation. The chief of police of the Fresno Police Department, along with five other Fresno PD officers, had been arrested on drug charges. After the chief of police was let out on bail, another officer, not inside of that initial group that was arrested, went to the chief of police's house to confront the chief because he was furious at him. That night, this officer was found dead right near the chief's house with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. The family of the deceased officer was like, no way, he did not shoot himself in the chest. But either way, no charges were pressed, although many people in the area believed the chief killed that officer and then covered it up. Following Lang's very public critique of the Fresno Police Department on Facebook and on the Fresno Bee, Lang became very concerned that the police department was upset with him for uncovering their scam and that now they were following him all over town and harassing him. And so as a protective measure, he set up a camera on the outside of his house watching the street and he started uploading the footage to YouTube. And some of the videos that he pulled are crazy. Lang would upload 17 videos to his YouTube channel called Lang Marine. Now every video has a fairly detailed caption associated with it where John describes what you're looking at. The first video is of this white pickup truck that pulls up in front of John's property. Now Lang would say in the description that this particular truck he has seen all over when he's out in public. And he believes it's an unmarked car of police officers that are following him. It slow rolls right in front of his property and then eventually drives away. 
and then a few moments later it drives back around and doesn't slow down and drives right past his house. Following these two drive-bys, Lang would say that he got a series of hang-up calls that he thinks were the police calling him to intimidate him. In the next video, you see a man walking his dog and stopping right in front of John's property. John has a dog and his dog runs up to the fence and the two dogs start smelling each other. And at some point, the guy with the dog walks off. Lang believes that that was a plainclothes police officer that was conditioning Lang's dog to not attack him if he were to come into the property. Lang is suggesting that the Fresno police are preparing to assault his property. In the third video, Lang claims that he came back to his house and someone had tampered with his security system with that camera, and he was now missing 20 minutes of footage. The fourth video he uploads is by far the most well-known of any of the uploads, and it shows a minivan pull up right in front of his house on the other side of the street, they slide open the door and out pops this guy with some very high-tech camera equipment that Lang claims is a thermal imaging camera and that they were scanning his house to see if he was home or not. Now, whether or not this was actually plainclothes police with a thermal imager or not, if it was my house and I saw someone across the street with that piece of equipment, I'd have some questions about what are you doing here? And apparently John felt just as concerned as I would have been because at this point, he files an official complaint against the Fresno PD to their internal affairs. Lang claims that following that formal complaint, things only got worse. He believes that internal affairs gave that complaint to the rest of the police department and that further upset them and made them target him even more aggressively. In the fifth video that Lang uploads to his channel, you see a guy in civilian clothes walking up to the front of Lang's property and then stopping right in front. He kind of looks up at Lang's property and then turns around and begins walking away. And then he starts texting and he gets into a car and he leaves. Lang believes this was a plainclothes police officer who was seeing if he was home and then reporting what he saw to the rest of the police. In the sixth video, Lang claims that police cruisers were driving up and down his street at 2 a.m. to try to wake him up with their sirens on. The seventh video, without reading the description, would mean nothing to you. But when you read the description, it's pretty interesting. He says the two guys that lived next door to him had randomly invited him to come over. Now, he wasn't close with his neighbors, but he agreed to go over. At some point, once he got over there, he felt like something was off. He didn't know what it was, but he felt very uncomfortable, and so he decides to leave. At which point, he says his neighbors did not want him to leave. They were really aggressively trying to get him to stay inside of their house. And when he said, no, I, I'm leaving, he said they blocked his way. He managed to push past them, walked outside. You see them following him as he leaves their property and walks on the sidewalk to his property, he has, a, he has a fence around his house and he's trying to get to his fence to open it up and they're blocking his way. They're not letting him go into his property. And then when finally he kind of pushes past them to go inside, they start yelling his name. And Lang would say that he thinks they were working with the police and they had pulled him away from his house so the police could go into Lang's house. And that when Lang was going back into his property, when they were yelling his name, that was to alert the police that he was coming back into the house. When Lang did go up to his house, he saw that the front door lock had been tampered with. And then when he went inside, his computer and his printer also appeared to have been tampered with. Now, this is only what Lang is saying. There is no proof that any of that happened, but that is the context for that video.
The eighth video shows two cruisers showing up in the middle of the night and parking out front of Lang's property and at least six officers get out and are just standing there under a street light. They don't appear to be doing anything. It, it doesn't make sense why they're there, but they stand there and kind of look over at Lang's property for a decent amount of time before ultimately getting back in and leaving. Lang says they were doing that purely to intimidate him. Videos 9 through 16 are fairly unremarkable, but there is one video where very clearly someone walks right up to Lang's truck and tries to break into it. It's not subtle, and Lang believes this was a plainclothes police officer. The 17th and final video that Lang uploads shows a carpet cleaning van pulling up right in front of his property. On the passenger side, a man gets out, he's wearing civilian clothes, just smoking a cigarette, looking up at Lang's property, and they're there for quite some time. And at some point, he gets back in the car after they don't do any carpet cleaning and they drive off. After uploading this final video, he goes onto Facebook and he shares a link to that video and he tells people to remember this van because he believed that the Fresno PD were just days away from finally launching their attack against him. Over the next couple of days, his Facebook posts become increasingly more panicked. He starts saying that he regrets ever critiquing the police department. He says that any moment they're gonna come into his house and kill him. Then finally, in one of his last posts to Facebook, he asks his friends, will someone come stay with me? I'm scared for my life. And while his friends were concerned, no one took him that seriously, and so no one stayed with him. That weekend, John Lang was found dead inside of his house that had been set on fire. When the fire department showed up to try to put the fire out, the door was barricaded shut. And when the coroner did his first initial report on the body, he said that Lang had stab wounds all over his chest and his back, but had ultimately died of asphyxiation. That initial report had been given to some of the journalists that were reporting on the story, and so they tweeted about it. John Lang, multiple stab wounds to the chest, to the back, died of asphyxiation. But following Lang's autopsy done by this coroner, where two Fresno police officers were in attendance, granted, it's apparently customary to have police officers present for autopsies, but it's worth pointing out for the context of the story, that same coroner retracted his statement about the location of these stab wounds and said they were only located on his chest, not his back, and that they were self-inflicted. And so this is a clear-cut suicide and everybody can just move on. And so they did. No charges were pressed against the Fresno PD and this was ruled a suicide. When the news came out that this was considered a suicide, anybody that had been following along John Lang's claims either on his YouTube channel or on Facebook that the Fresno PD was out to get him, they were not buying that this was a suicide. They thought that the Fresno PD was responsible. A number of internet sleuths began investigating the case. That van that had pulled up in front of Lang's property in his final video when he said, remember this van? Well, the logo on the side of that van was for a carpet cleaning company. That didn't exist. Someone discovered that it was a fake company. Also, they found out that Lang had apparently tried to call his ex-wife a number of times right before neighbors had reported seeing smoke coming out of his house. There was this huge petition put together on change.org that's still active to try to reopen the coroner's investigation. But despite the strangeness surrounding John Lang's case, it has been ruled a suicide and there's no sign that they're about to reinvestigate it. So did the Fresno Police Department attack John Lang in retaliation for him discovering their license plate scam? Or did John Lang commit suicide? Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to as many people as I can. If you liked this video and you haven't done this already, I would encourage you to go to your local supermarket and buy a candy apple making kit, but instead of using apples, put in a big red onion. Dip one of those in there and then give that to the like button. Also, please subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. If you have a story suggestion, you can go to our subreddit just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below and you can post your story suggestions there. If I intentionally use one of your story suggestions, I will certainly credit you. If you want to get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram. My handle is John Ballin 416. I'm also very active on TikTok where my handle is Mr. Ballin. So whether I see you on Reddit, Instagram, TikTok, or here on YouTube, or or some combination of those. I'm just very appreciative of your support. And until next time, guys, that's going to do it. See ya.